one um, who's watching this recording you can find it live on our Facebook page as well as in the group and um, really just wanted to start off by saying the impetus for this webinar John was the fact that you and I spoke you know several weeks ago months ago at this point and you were telling me how you use Chime to, to help you crush expires and FISBOs. And consequently, I had multiple people start direct messaging me on Facebook asking me, do you know anyone who uses Chime for, fire, uh, for, for expires and FISBOs? And it just kept happening and kept happening. I thought, uh -huh. oh, there's no reason for me to keep talking to these people. I'm going to get John on here to talk to everyone and um, he's going to kind of lead the way and, and spill the secret sauce on um, how to convert expires and FISBOs. So if you don't mind, let's just kick off by saying, you know, how did you get to the point in your business where you decided this was where, like, this was going to be my bread and butter? Well, so I wouldn't say it's necessarily a bread and butter, but it's definitely a go-to, right? And, and first of all, I need to apologize up front because I'm in the office with the team and they're... It. They're making all kinds of weird ass noises and stuff in the background, and, and they've got us on video on Instagram or whatever. And Josh is going to pop in. Sorry, sir. And is over I there. live right behind him, so it's it's just inevitable. So we it's have a group webinar. It's a, it's a group webinar. Everyone can, exactly. can exactly. participate. We'll bring it all to you. But um, so I've been in real estate for about six years, and I started real estate in Phoenix. I didn't know anybody, so expireds and FISBO were, just, were like the easiest way to get rolling. And it's always been a big base for my business. And April here is joining me because she now goes on a lot of those appointments that we generate through Chime. Um, in the Phoenix market, we average, you know, on FISBOs, we average about 55 a week. On expireds, we're probably at three or 400 a month. So, I mean, we've got five to 600, you know, new leads every single month, right? Um, wow. We, we've used Mojo in the past or, you know, Espresso Cafe and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, they're good programs, whatever, but it's really nice to have something that's a little more automated, that's a little easier to, to touch everybody without having to, you know, get beat up on the phone on a daily basis. So that's kind of what the system that we built. Yeah. So let's, uh, uh, let's unpack that right away because you brought up a great point that I think is a lot of people's hesitation when it comes to uh, expires and FISBOs, their, they, their mind immediately goes to getting yelled at on the phone, getting beat up, people saying you're the seventh agent to call me in the past 15 minutes. Oh, well, yeah. you're, your listing expired this morning, right? So, or whatever. So, so talk to us about how, I know you probably can't avoid that entirely, but how do you soften that experience? So we're you. I mean, I'm using Chime as a, using the AI in Chime and engaging these people, you know, directly through text and emails. And basically, I mean, we're kind of going off to the low hanging fruit. So we're just looking at hand raisers. So, you know, we have agents on the team that can log into Mojo, can, you know, line up 150 expires and rip through them all and take that beating and that's totally fine and it works um but what we're doing now is we're just dumping every single expired every physical directly into chime they go immediately on an automated smart plan we don't even touch it all we do is look at the little text box in the corner and you know sometimes they're telling us to go take a hike and jump in a lake or whatever but sometimes they're raising a hand saying hey we want some more information so you know the hand raisers are the ones that we engage and for this year I mean, I think we're at about probably 17, 17 to 18 listings that we've taken from that. Um, and honest to gosh, Randy, so that, that's a, it's not a focus. So we're, we're not even really thinking about it other than just looking wow. at the people that are raising their hand. Wow. What, what a dream, right? For, yeah. for people, yeah, for people, for people to only work with the hand raisers. So what's, um, so, so let's do some of that math backwards. If you're doing about 500 leads a month, uh -huh. And we're, you know, into August, eight months, that's 4,500 leads in total. And you've just picked up the hand raisers. You know, there's still a ton of business in there. If someone were to go in and pound the phones and, th and you know, oh, yeah. Yeah. blow up lists. Do you yeah, have the some is, I mean, the, so the beauty of it is with Chime, with, especially with the, the multi-line dialer, um, you can take those lists and throw them into the dialer as well. And, you know, you've eliminated Mojo, which, you know, I think Mojo is still a superior dialing platform, but that's all it is, right? Um, but by having it all in the chime, we've got it in one place. We've got the follow-up plans we can put onto it. And also the, you know, the AI and automation 
which is a huge difference from the past. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's a ton of low hanging fruit. And mm -hmm. like I said, we're, you know, we're more focused. I shouldn't say more focused, but you know, we bring in PPC leads and Facebook leads and referrals sure. and everything else. And this is like, this is great for newer agents. Like April's a newer agent. So, mm -hmm. but she gets to go out on appointments, listing appointments, talk to people, kind of get a feel for them. And, and it's not cold, you know, they've actually reached out to us. So it's, it's a pretty mm -hmm. good way to do business. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't suck when someone reaches out to you for sure. Uh, talk to us a little bit about some of the scripting you use for, for FISBOs and expireds. Any, any anything um, super unique you'd want to share about it? Well, so on FISBOs, FISBOs and expireds, we've got I run two different scripts simultaneously, right? Some people are going to hate this, but it is what it is. So, you know, we run one which is a cheap script and basically saying, hey, you know, we've got commissions ranging from 3% to 6%. Give me a call so that we can discuss how we do that. You know, obviously 3% if we bring the buyer, 6% uh, if it's a normal total listing, and we negotiate it in between, right? But usually that kind of, that script triggers their interest because they're like, oh man, you know, that's, and it starts a conversation. So it's kind of, uh, you know, it's the loss leader that we throw out there. The second approach is just really way more um, providing value. So we've got like, you know, a 12 page for sale by owner field guide that tells them, all the stuff they need to do with the concept being, hey, we want to overwhelm them with so many things that they're like, oh my gosh, I can't do this. You know, but then we provide, you know, market reports that come out of Chime automatically, obviously, um, mm -hmm. and all the data that we can give them to kind of to supplement what they're doing already. And the mm -hmm. key is, you know, most FISBOs are, they're on this curve, right? So the first 15 days, <laughs> excuse me, the first 15 days, they could care less who you are because they, are convinced they can do it themselves. They really don't have an interest in an agent. The next 15 days are kind of angry at agents because they keep calling them, but they don't bring buyers. And then after 30 days, then they start to get into the, the discovery role where the wife's like, hey, Bob, you can't sell the damn house. Let's call a realtor, right? So we need to stay engaged with them throughout that time. And by using, you know, an agent, just as a nature of being a realtor, they're not going to follow up with the FISBO 15 times. They're just not going to do it. Um, sure. But Chime will. So that's where we put it. Mm -hmm. that's, that's great it's like the five stages of grief exactly, exactly. or whatever whatever stages however many stages there are whatever yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome so um that was for the fizzbos right that was the two approaches you've got the the, the price approach which is three percent if i bring the buyer six percent if it's normal transaction where and I negotiate live, so. in between. Yeah. yeah and then you negotiate exactly exactly so that's um, that's one approach and the other approach is just kind of outlasting them, yep. um, bringing value, showing them that maybe this isn't something they want to do. Is it, are those two approaches you're running simultaneously? Are they built into one smart plan? How do you pick who goes where? So it's going through the round robin on an AB based on source. So it's just going okay. back and forth. Um, okay. You know, so depending you know, it's, so when they come out of, we use my plus leads because it's, it's pretty cheap and it integrates with Zapier and we can get them right into the pipeline, but okay. I can, you know, to, we can distinguish them on the source come out of my plus leads. So if it's this source, which is FISBO plus, or if it's just FISBO, then they go on the two different plans. They just alternate back and forth. Oh, interesting. And then you can take a look back at, see your, see your results and figure out which one responds better or. In in theory, <laughs> theory, in theory, yeah. actually, you know, yeah. when I get to it. Yeah, we've never done that and gone back and looked, but you can, absolutely could. And that was a concept I brought, obviously, to A-B test and see what we could do, but um, we sure. have it. Uh, but it, I mean, it, it generates, man, it generates a lot of conversations. I mean, probably, I would say literally 10 to 20 conversations a day, every day. Um, wow. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, let's be honest, probably half of those conversations are like, uh, you know, either bring me a buyer or, you know, I took the house off the market because I hate realtors, whatever, <laughs> but it's generating responses. So, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, when you wake up in the morning, you go to Chime, on the bottom right corner, you got that little thing that's got the phone and the text messages. Well, every morning you get up, you got 15 to 20 text messages to follow up on. Um, yeah, and it's, it's a motivator, right? So, I mean, we can hand out leads to team agents on a regular basis that are like, you know, pretty much semi-warm. Like, I think April's done probably two in the last month. Is that right? Um, Chime? Yeah, Anthem and uh, Sun mm -hmm. City. Yeah, so that's two in 30 days. And, I mean, our market's unbelievably hot. So, I mean, they're both under contract, you know. Um, not the that's greatest awesome. commissions, right? But, I mean, there was really – there was no 
no money went into developing those leads, you know, $25 a month, no money went into chasing them. And mm -hmm. we literally walked, went there and signed the deals. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Uh, you know, a quick nickel is better than a slow dime. Yeah. hundred percent. And it keeps you busy, you know, and if you're a, uh, if you're a newer agent, you know, a year or two less, you know, every, every, the thing that most agents don't understand is that if you're a listing agent, well, you suck. And the only way you get better is when you go on more listing appointments, right? So this mm -hmm. is a great way to do that. So if you want to get good at it, you need to be in front of people in role playing. All that stuff helps, but I mean, actually sitting across the table from somebody who wants to sell their house is, is the best way to get good at it. No, no question. And so when someone says bring a buyer, are they being facetious mostly, or is that a pretty genuine response? Are they being pretty huh. genuine about it? Yeah, they're pretty realistic. They're like, hey, we're more than willing to pay if you bring a buyer. Um, and, you, you know, there's a whole bunch of objection handling, whatever. I mean, my objection handling normally is, you know, like, look, we market properties to realtors, to buyers, um, but are, we're not out looking for a buyer for your specific property. And we don't have a contract in place. You're not in the MLS. It's just too high risk for me unless we have something in place that, that I'm working for you, you know. Um, sure. Some people react well. But, again, it's a timeline, right? So, you know, after 30, 45, 60 days, that's when they usually tend to, to turn into to clients. Sure. Interesting. So you come back, so they say, bring a buyer and you say, uh, it's too high risk because we're not working together exclusively. And then 30 to 45 days later, they get tired and say, all right, we'll, we'll give this guy a shot. And you, and you've stayed in touch with them through smart plans and things like that. Yeah. So the smart plan, will, you know, the first one is like, Hey, you know, do you want, can we help you sell your house? I mean, I know you're selling your house by yourself. Congratulations. We've got some material that we can share with you. Um, and that's like our field guide, that kind of stuff. And then, you know, the, as, the, as the text messages and the emails go along, we share market reports, we share updates on the neighborhood, we share tips about photography, about open houses, um, all that kind of stuff, you know, which is, it's, it's valuable. I mean, it helps them do their, their gig. But the idea is like, by the time they finally make that swing from being a, a for sale by owner to listing with the client, we've touched them 15 or 20 times, right? So sure. we want to be, you know, front and front of mind. So that's how it works. So this is like going, you want to go the full 15 rounds with them yeah. and just wear them out. Exactly. Yeah. Because, Probably. you know, if you, if you see them on Zillow and you call them day one, well, you're one of, you know, in our market, you're one of probably 150 agents that have called. Um, <laughs> but, you know, 45 days from now, there's not many left standing. Sure. All those agents are making one call and then they're moving on to the next FISBO and the next expired and they yeah. don't have a system in place like what you've done. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So this is a whole new world for me. You know, my whole background for the past five years has largely been, you know, online lead generation, which sure. I guess has, has the same, same principle of having to follow up, but I think there's way more competition in FISBOs and expireds because it's the same person getting blown up by, yeah. you know, like you said, 150 agents. Uh, yeah, so and I mean, that, you know, the online lead is speed to lead, right? So if you pay a PPC or Facebook, it's all speed to lead. On the FISBOs and expired, it's, it's not, right? So it's it's developing that report and stay in front of mind for an extended period of time. You know, like our drip campaigns that we run on expireds run for 18 months. Um, so, you know, we're gonna reach out to them and touch them pretty consistently. And if her phone rings again, we're gonna kick her out of the room. <laughs> no, because mine rang the first time. So, but yeah, so I mean, we're gonna stay in front of them for 12 months a year. You know, the FISBOs, we only do it for three months because normally at the end of three months, they've either sold the house or listed it. Sure, okay, that makes sense. So if it expires, it's just about <laughs> staying in touch with them long-term and, and you use your smart plans to reach out initially so you're not making as many um phone calls up front yeah i mean so the deal is it's so again i've been an agent for six years and i built my business on fizzles and expires and dude it, it's mentally taxing and it's very very tough to 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 thrive off of that because i mean you you got to hammer the phones every morning at 7 55 in order to be successful at it and you're going to get beat up from 7 55 till 10 every single morning and it plays on your mind so i mean rather than do that we're just gonna hit everybody and a few of them are gonna raise their hands. Now that doesn't mean we don't call expires and FISBOs. We'll have days where we do that. And it's probably more for talking to people live and training and learning than it is for success. Um, okay. If I use a kind of an automated system and stay in touch with them, that, that especially the FISBOs for sure, that's what wins, right? Because if you're hammering FISBOs for the first week and a half, two weeks, they're gonna hate you. 
because during that time period in that mindset, they think they're better than the agent. They think they can sell it. They don't need you. Why would a hospital deal with you? So you need, just need to ride along. And that's okay. what we're Yeah, that makes sense. And, and, you, and you bring up such a good point about the, um, um, the mental fatigue or getting beat up by yeah. those phone yeah. calls for, you know, two and a half, three hours a day that really wears you out by the time you get off the phone and you're ready to actually start working with clients who like you. Yeah, right? you're already bitter. You're already hurt. You're yeah. irritable. Um, you're, that energy is going to come out somewhere and it's either going to come out with your clients. It's going to come out with your significant others. It, it, you know, it wears on you. So when you're able to, uh, use the smart plans in order to actually um, kind of find the folks who are actually ready to talk to you. Sure. Then you can spend more time and more pleasant conversations. That makes sense. Yeah, um, our negative energy seems to come out at the uh, Mexican bar next door. <laughs> so, uh, that's uh, you know about two o'clock. That's oh like, that's where you'll find our negative energy coming out. <laughs> That's fantastic. I mean, who can hate a good margarita, right? Yeah, exactly. Or Jim. <laughs> so, so let's, let's, let's talk a little bit more about um, you use the smart plans for FISBOs expired so you get the hand raisers. Um, the rest of the folks go for long-term um, drip campaigns in, in terms of expireds. FISBOs stop after about 90 days. Yeah. And after that, do you just make those leads available for the team at large and they can go in Most there? Of the, all of them go into the lead pod, right? So all of those leads go, you know, they're on the drip systems, they're on the AI, they're getting texted. They go into the lead pod and every age on the team can go into the lead pod at any time and follow up and claim anybody. The only, the only caveat that we put to it is you can't take the lead unless you've had a conversation with them. Right? So, um, but yeah, I mean, if you're a motivated agent, you can get up in the morning, check the lead pod. All you got to do is look at text responses, you know, just click on the number of times they've been texted and you can see immediately who's, you know, who's engaging and who's not. Um, you know, the one, the one drawback to it is that since it's, it's kind of a higher volume, I mean, we're talking 450, 500 people a month. We miss some, you know, we'll, we'll have people that'll text the uh, chime back at 7 PM and say, yep, I'm ready to list. Come over to my house at nine in the morning. I've got four agents coming. And at nine 30, we read the text message <laughs> and it's like, so that's happened. Right. Um, but you know, that's, what are you going to do? You just keep so, up as much as you can. So that's a foreign idea to me. If someone says, come over at nine, I've got four agents coming over. And this is just listing interviews. Like, yeah. Well, yeah, so as an example, I don't know how we can see it, but this is my text notifications on Chime, right? Yeah. So. Okay, so there's quite a few. Dude, it's nonstop. <laughs> it's nonstop. So you really got to pay attention. I mean, you just got to pay attention. So, you know, you're going to miss a few. Um, but on the flip side, it, it works, right? I mean, we see people, we list houses from it, and, you know, we don't get mentally fatigued on getting beat up every morning. And so is my plus leads where you get all of your FISBOs and expires or what are the lead sources that you use? You know what? I just use my plus leads. That's it. So, and the reason I do it's, it's cheap. I think it's like 49 bucks a month or something. Um, whereas like, you know, FISBO, Redfin, Vulcan 7, uh, Cafe Espresso, those is going to be much more expensive. So um, we just use the my plus leads and it, it works really well with Zapier. So, it, you know, it's constantly, it's constantly dumping them into Chime, which is great. Oh, wow. So you've got your Chime spend, you've got your Zapier and MyPlus lead spend, and that's, I mean, that is a pretty good return on your investment. Yeah, yeah so 70 bucks. I mean, it's 70 bucks a month between Zapier and MyPlus leads. Mm -hmm. And 18 listings to date, that's awesome. Year to date. Yeah, that's yeah. That. it works, right? So sure. you come in the morning, you respond to all the folks who have raised their hand, you get through those responses. Where... Where else are you getting some of your business today? Um, so Google PBC, open houses, and Facebook advertising. So we just recently added an ISA, Hannah, who was in the picture for a second. But um, so Hannah's banging out the phones as well. You know, and again, that's like, as you said, you're the online lead gen guy. So it's speed to lead and it's follow up, you know, and that's, that's uh, 
you know, realtors, and I'm, I'm, I'm a realtor, so I'm just as bad and, and culpable as anybody else, but we're just not going to follow up as much as we should with leads. So, you know, if you generate 500, 600, 700 leads a month, um, if you don't have an ISA, in my own personal opinion, it's really difficult to maintain the follow up that you need to, to actually secure the relationship. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. And so, um, is, is that about the lead volume that you have coming in so far? Is about 500 online leads a month? Yeah, probably Yeah, more like 300 to 400. Um, I mean, we could at any time, right, just by tweaking the, the ads, we could bring it up to 600, 700, 800, but we do more long form ads and, uh, you know, more stuff that requires more info because we really want a higher quality lead. Um, yeah. I don't necessarily know if it works or not, but, you know, if you're generating, I mean, we're a small team, so there's only six of us. If we're doing, you know, if we're doing 800, 900 leads a month, it's, it's just, it's, it's, they're not getting followed up on and they're, they're not getting the attention and it's just too much. Um, well, it's, a, it's a point of diminishing returns, right? Okay. Too, yeah. too few leads is a problem. Too many leads is definitely a problem. Exactly. Because, because even if you are able to call each of those leads, if you only call them one time, you're still missing the boat. Yeah, you wasted your time. Yeah, if, yeah. You don't, if you call them one time 30 minutes after it comes in, you might as well just, you know, delete the lead. Turn around and sell it to somebody else. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Um, so Google, Facebook, um, open houses was yep. a big one for you. Okay. So I, I know this wasn't exactly the uh, topic of the of today's call, but I am interested in, in talking to you about w how you've evolved during the open house, uh, or how, how your open houses have evolved during this COVID process. Yeah, so I mean, Arizona never shut them down, right? So we never, we were never directed to not have any open houses. Um, I would say for probably two months, they were pretty limited. Um, you know, March, April, pretty limited. Uh, May, June, July, they started creeping back, creeping back, creeping back. And I mean, I'd say we're pretty much back to, you know, our normal open house flow. Um, for us in our market, we have a lot of out-of-state people. I mean, a lot of people come from California, Washington, Chicago, wherever. So open houses, they get traffic, right? Um, they don't get a ton of traffic, but it's a good lead gen source and it works. Mm -hmm. Okay, I dig it. Awesome. Um, let's see here. What what FISBO questions am I not asking? Like I said, this, this is this is kind of uh, foreign territory for me usually. Sure, sure. Well, I think the biggest the biggest thing to keep in mind, and I'll send it to you if you want. So our brokerage, we have about twenty two hundred agents here in, in Arizona, um, and I actually teach a class on FISBO. So it's it's all mindset, right? Because everybody, every agent thinks in their mind that the main objection for FISBO is that they want to keep the money, they don't want to pay a commission. You know, in reality, what I found in doing this for six years and talking to literally thousands of them is it's not necessarily the money, it's more ego. So they just feel like you you don't bring value to the table and they don't see why they need you, right? So, you know, if you help educate them on why they need you and the things that you do and how you make it happen, I mean, the number one FISBO response is, I'm on Zillow, so I got to cover. It's like, okay, well, so you're right. You're, you're, you're fishing in a pond where there's 32% of the fish where's the, you know, where's the other 68% of the fish and how are you going to find them? Um, and then you also know that if you're just on Zillow, your house doesn't even show up in the list is on set for sale. You know, you have to get you, like, if you see a list of houses, it, it's not going to pop up there. It, it shows not on the market until you click on the house and pull it up in Zillow. And then it says for sale by owner. And then the owner's name is down at the bottom underneath six other agents that paid money. So the majority of people are going to click on the agents. They're not going to call the owner directly. There's that real small field. So if you're only on Zillow, you, you're probably dealing with, you're probably marketing to 8% to 10% of the people out there. So, you know, if you're selling your car, would you just put it on the corner in front of your house or would you put it all over the place, you know? So sure. that's, that's the biggest mentality. And you just have to educate people on the things that you do to, you know, expand it, to get it out to as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. So FISBO's, is, a, is educating people on the value you bring, not necessarily saving them money. With what are some reasons that listings expire and what are some of the objections you can help in that, you know, with that? Yeah, so today, you know, the, in today's market here in Arizona, listings expire normally because somewhere down the line, a lender screwed up and couldn't close the deal. 
Um, oh, so wow. our market, yeah, our market's hot and the lenders are having a hard time, you know, getting appraisals done in a timely manner, getting the file through underwriting, getting the CDs out. And so you've got sellers that are sitting there for a week, two weeks, three weeks, buyers frustrated, sellers frustrated, deal blows up. Um, and whose fault is it? Well, it's the listing agent's fault, you know, so they're gone. Um, so that's a big portion of our expireds right now. You know, and again, with a hot market like this, there's a couple key points that one is the people that just couldn't get it closed. You know, two is price point. Obviously price point's an issue. The nice thing about being the second agent on a listing is that they're usually way more realistic on price. Um, mm -hmm. so that's the second one. And you know, third is still, dude, good, cru cruise through our MLS. You know, there's 13, 14,000 active properties, which is a crazy low inventory for us. But out of those 13 to 14,000, there's probably still a thousand that have iPhone six pictures. You know, uh, so, oh. dude, they're, they're there, you know, right? I mean, we see them all the time. It's like, dude, what is going on? So, you know, in, in, especially in the world of COVID, um, your house has just got a pop, you know, a year ago, people would go out and see 30 or 40 houses. Now they, they see 30 or 40, or 50 houses online and you're down to five or six or seven. Um, so if you're not looking smoking hot online, uh, you're, you're going to miss the cut. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's say my house expired because the listing agent and the loan officer weren't able to get the deal closed. And I'm, I'm, very frustrated by, by it because I wanted to sell my home. Um, and you're calling me saying that I have a loan officer who can close the deal. What's, what's the talk track there? How am I well, I'm, calling to you to list, I'm calling you to list the house, right? So I'm not bringing a buyer necessarily, but the way we kind of approach that is uh, there's a couple of different things. So we have letters in our market now that have closing guarantees. So if they don't close okay. on time, they'll pay $5,000, you know, um, or a thousand bucks or 2,500. And then secondly, we just tell them up front, it's like, look, here's the deal. We're going to vet the buyer as, as good as possible. And we're going to stay on track with the lender the whole time. Um, and what you see is a ton of agents, like lenders in Arizona at least, have to provide a, a loan status update on request, but nobody requests them. So the loan sits there for three weeks. The, the buyer agent and the seller agent have not talked to the lender. They don't know where the status is. The loan's supposed to close in a week. And the lender is just now getting final bank statements or whatever, you know, so it's a process. And what we do is we, we kick that over to Hannah, who's ISA and her job is to make sure that we have LSUs and our job is to make sure that the boxes are crossed off and we're progressing in the loan. Um, and we kind of share that process with the sellers up front and, you know, we can't control the world, right? But we can control the process. And as long as we're on track where we should be, then it should close, you know, so it's just managing the process and being aware of it. And, it, you know, I've got a deal now where we followed the lender through the whole time. It's my lender. And we followed it through the whole time. And they went into underwriting, didn't get to see that out on time. And we're going to close. But we're only going to close two days late um, versus two weeks because we were on top of it. You know, we caught it immediately. The CD is supposed to go out on Friday. You know, Friday, we're like, where's the CD? Where's the CD? Monday, we get the CD out. So it gives you a couple sure. of days. But being on top of it and just in understanding the process is what does it. And um, like April and I and Hannah and Josh and the team share all the time, you know, for us, we compete against Zillow. We compete against Redfin. We compete against, you know, Divi, Moxie, Doxy, who, like, whatever. You know, I, especially Phoenix, it's like a hotbed. I think you're in Phoenix, aren't you? So, or headquartered in Phoenix. I'm in Atlanta. <laughs> okay. Okay. So Phoenix is like a, a real estate technology hotspot. Uh, I love the Hawks. So every, oh, everybody, funny. I love it. <laughs> Everybody that thinks about real estate as a technology company, well, they, they yes. try it out in Phoenix for some reason. Um, yeah, they do. Yeah. It's like it's like the uh, Peachtree dish of real estate yeah. tech, and then it goes to yeah. California, and then yeah. it slowly moves east. 100%. So what I tell all of our guys is like, look, the only way we can compete is you just need to be way more knowledgeable about your market in your area than, than anybody else. Because Zillow's not coming to your house, right? And our brokerage actually, the team that sells the majority of the Zillow houses is here at our brokerage. Great guys, but I mean, you know, Zillow as a whole is not coming to your house. They're not estimating your house. Um, open door, offer pad is, they're not there to, you know, the, even though the, the ads on TV are great, right? Oh, it's so easy. It works so smooth. Well, there's a reason because they're, they're screwing you out a ton of money, right? So you just, you got to be educated. You got to be able to share that information with uh, everybody you talk to. Um, and if you don't, you're just not going to succeed. Sure. So where, where do people find this education? 
what are the resources for them? Um, so, you know, in the Valley, we use the Crawford Report, which is like, um, it's the, you know, they combine all the numbers for everything. And they do all kind, you know, all the title companies put on weekly Crawford updates, which shares where we're at, what the statistics are, where it's headed. You know, but even more than that, go to, go to the street by street level and just drive your darn town. Drive around where you live. You know, know where the churches are, know where the schools are, know where the charter schools are, know where the gated subs are, know where you can have horses, know where you can have acreage. Um, you know, just have that inside experience and feel because you can't get that from Zillow. You can't get that from necessarily Redfin or Open Door or Offer Pad. It just doesn't exist, you know. So if you have that knowledge and you can make your, your seller or your, your buyer feel comfortable that you're the expert in your area, well, then you're definitely going to be. Mm-hmm. Okay, I dig it. And so, um, sorry, I'm kind of stuck on this uh, whole loan piece because I find it so interesting. Um, yeah. So for this, do you always go with a local guy, do national brands? Like what? Well, what so we don't the... we don't get to pick, right? I mean, that's up to the that's up yeah. to the to the buyer, you know. But we can educate them on it. But the, you know, the thing is, so what's going on in the world right now, as far as lenders go, right? Every person in the world is refinancing their home. Everybody, yep. right? So yep. title companies are slammed, lenders are slammed, underwriters are slammed, everybody's slammed. Um, and if you want, you know, unfortunately the squeaky wheel gets the grease, right? So if you're in a purchase with, you know, like close the deal with Liberty Mutual, who's a big online lender, the LO had 400 open files, right? <laughs> so there is no possible way we would have closed anywhere near on time if I didn't talk to that dude every single day, you know? Wow. so. You know, he got frustrated up front, but then, you know, two or three weeks in the process, he understands that, look, man, I don't really want to talk to you. I got other stuff to do, so I better get your stuff done. Um, <laughs> it's just what you got to do, right? I mean, if it's a local lender that we work with all the time that we have a good relationship with, which we try to make sure that our clients also give them a shot, and we explain to them why. It's like, look, you know, Chris is around the corner. We can go sit down and talk to him. Um, it makes it so much easier, you know, but... If they do that, then, you know, there's a little more comfort level there because we know that uh, we work together all the time and they want the business and they're going to get the job done. But otherwise, you just got to stay on top of them all the time. Okay. I dig it. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, well, this has been really, really uh, informative for me. I appreciate you taking some time to do this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> She's just talking nonstop. <laughs> no, we appreciate yeah. it, dude. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And, and anything else you've, you've got before I let you go? Uh, no, just have fun, man. And just no, have fun. I mean, I love it. I love what I do. It's only been six years, but it's a riot. And uh, I think we have a lot of fun, right? Yeah. So that's what we do. Well, what you do and you never work a day in the life and all and, and all that. 100%. Stuff. 100%. <laughs> awesome, John. Well, thanks so much again. I really appreciate it. Um, take it easy. And uh, I'll talk to you again soon. Thanks, buddy. Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye.